me and my old lady, we made Christmas dinner every year. I try a new way to make a turkey every year. We have our competing cranberry sauces. She does the vegetable thing like a good, filthy vegetarian, and I handle the dressing and the gravy. And once that's all over, we get a ton of leftover bones and carcass. We're still half cut from the holidays, so what do? I make a stock. Not just any stock. A crazy, weird, French-Chinese hybrid stock. That's right. So at this point, I'm three Christmas movies in. Murtaugh is getting too old for this shit. John is walking around barefoot and making fists with his toes. Hennessy is frank and earnest with his women. Frank in Chicago and earnest in New York. Santa just beat up some kids on skateboards and really found meaning in his life. And he done got told not to feed him after midnight. So get that carcass into the oven, damn it. Now you don't gotta strip him clean, just get him in there. And then, this is important, Realize you're probably better off going to bed and doing this in the morning. <laughs> Good morning. There's a pill for you to take today, and it's all about validation-seeking behavior. Every guy does it, and every guy needs to stop as a strategic decision. Cut these vegetables nice and thick. Question. So what's one thing in common between those trad power dads, the MGTOWs who buy silicone dolls, and dudes who are running their marriages off a cliff? It's that they need others around them to validate the decisions they made. And it's a horrible thing for men, and women, but mostly men. I don't know who taught us how to do this, but they need to stop. Rollo Tomasi often references how men are being raised as if they were defective women, and this here, prime example. Women love validation. They crave it. Get a girl a really good man that she looks up to, loves a bunch, and nothing makes her happier than getting him to tell her how great she is. But you're not a woman. And if you are, I don't know why you're here. But hey, welcome. Sit back and enjoy. Women are hardwired with something that evolutionary psychologist Dr. David Buss refers to as the innate skepticism bias. Now, it's geared towards automatically distrusting low-effort signals of love, but in this case, it's also parallels a manifestation of an automatic removing of validation if a guy is seeking it. Now, it's a visceral thing. Girls don't know they do it, but do what they do. So what do we do? Well, celery, carrot, and onion, they're a standard French stock base, but unlike the French, we're gonna char them for a more savory flavor. Like, we're not looking to cook these things, we're charring them. You're gonna see the Chinese influence on this French stock here, and you're gonna thank me for it later. Ah, the good old oven. Um, crank it up, put it on a broil. If you got a roast setting, do that. Otherwise, just stick it on a high broil. We just want direct heat on these things here. I think I set mine to 500 degrees. It's funny, there's like five time lapses in this one because the stock takes so long. So for this, how long do you roast it for? Mm, for long enough if you need to. Put a timer on your microwave to keep track. About an hour and nine minutes should do. <laughs> Honestly, just keep an eye on the thing and pull it out when it looks like you left it in there too long, but before the fire alarm goes off. So the problem with validation, it's twofold. One, and I mentioned it earlier, it's that it's unattractive. A lot of guys seem overly concerned about doing things to please women, which seems weird on how they frame it. I mean, if you want somebody in your life in some romantic capacity, then they have to kind of see some sort of value in being around you. So if you avoid doing anything just because a woman would enjoy it, well then you're cutting off the nose despite the face. I mean, it's okay. You're allowed to be attractive, even if women find it attractive. Of course, you did save your leftover potato water for Christmas, right? If not, that's okay. I mean, just get water by itself like a pleb. But dump all your charred vegetables and bones in there, let it boil. Add a bit more water to keep everything sort of submerged. 
If you're gonna store this in the freezer afterwards, make sure you reduce it by about half once you're done so you have some concentrate, save you a lot of space. And the bigger problem though, and it's one of, it's one of freedom, power, and judgment. Now I've said it before, but a lot of this is about being attractive and not being unattractive. So when you're a guy and you're looking for validation, you signal, you signal an insecurity about yourself. When you do things that aren't getting validated, like, you know, mundane things, you just do them. A girl or somebody else can like them or not like them, but they don't control them. You just do them. Now, hard to believe, this is firmly in the don't be unattractive camp. Because there's something really off-putting about putting your life in somebody else's hands like this. We all know that your boss doesn't want to babysit you. Your friends, your friends will put up with it for a bit, but eventually stop inviting you to the Christmas parties. And your girl? Your girl is actively resenting it. They don't know why they resent it. It's some limbic brain thing. They make up some reasoning afterwards, but that's the visceral reactions for you. We don't know why we do them, and we just make up justifications after the fact. But you may be asking, why do we even do them if they're so bad? Well, I'm glad I asked. Part of it is we were trained as children and we default to what we know. Moms today, they're not like your grandma. They do goofy things. They negotiate with their kids. They ask them permission, all kinds of stupidity. And moms, moms don't know what it's like to be a five-year-old boy. They know what it's like to be a girl. And girls like to make people around them happy at their age. Well, except you, Karen. You played with trucks and you didn't need no man before men were a thing. I get it, I get it. Don't forget to stir your stock using the Vortex method, which provides the maximum amount of stock flavor and masculine energy into your basic cooking job that your girl would have done if she didn't waste her 20s on that communications degree. So other than Karen, if you spend the first 13 years of your life being raised like a defective girl, you can't be surprised when you keep a few of those behaviors going in the long term. Now, the other reason, the other reason is because you hate risk. You hate risk, you hate failure, and you lack accountability. By getting a consensus from other people, you, you spread the blame. Now, I know in a previous video, I talked about girl brain and blame. The short of it is, they hate it. Girls generally have a, a limbic brain aversion to failure, to rejection, stuff like that. And... Say what you want about girls. Maybe you think they're smarter than men. Maybe you think they're not. The one thing you can argue with is that they have way more experience with men than you ever will with women. Yes, yes, except for you, Karen. You married your beau right out of high school. You're wonderful, you're amazing, and you would not believe how much this is not about you. Anyways, so they can tell when the rejection and the failure train's coming, and they ain't buying tickets. Besides, do you, do you really want to offload all this onto your 120 pound little tart? Actually, you know what? The YouTube statistics say most of you guys are American. So uh, do you really want to offload all this onto your 150 pound tart? There, I stand corrected. Thick with two C's, right? Ah. So we laid out the map here. How do we traverse the terrain? And it's simple, if you're paying attention. Whenever you have the urge to tell a girl what you're doing, whenever that comes up, just stop. Don't tell people what you want to do, or even tell people what you did. They'll find out if it's important. If they need to know, then drop a line. But that's, that's logistics, we're not talking about that. Hey Karen, I dropped off the kids at your mother's, pick them up tomorrow. That's good. Hey Karen, I made the kids a lunch, gave them all baths, and sorted out our spices in alphabetical order. Are you having fun with your cousin in Cancun? That's not. But here, I won't do this justice here, so I strongly suggest you check out a book by Dr. Robert Glover. It's a great book. No more Mr. Nice Guy. He sums up a good 20-year clinical practice and puts it into terms most guys will instantly resonate with. How do I know this? Because I've already seen it happen a few hundred times now myself. A quick history lesson on stocks here. With the French stock, you normally have, and I can't remember the word off the top of my head, but as a base, you use celery, 
onions, and carrots. You'll sometimes stab some cloves into there, and you simmer them at a very low temperature over a long period of time, skimming off the imperfections. And that's fine. What we're doing here is a Chinese method, though, of like a rolling boil and charring the vegetables first, which I might even be Mexican. I couldn't tell you. And this adds some more calcium because it's actually like breaking down a lot of the bones themselves. And so your stock's going to have a more cloudy or opaque texture to it. But on that note, enjoy your stock and anything you want to make. Take care. Yeah, wait, 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 wait. You know what? At least let's cook something with this. Literally grab anything you have around the house and throw it in there. Try it out. I'm going to throw some pasta, carrots, peas maybe. Then I got these old rye crisps. Now maybe I'll put some cheese on top and then roast it in the oven. Oh, but wait, you're telling me not to add two types of carbs to the same dish? Well, I'm telling you to go f*** yourself. I do what I do and you can't stop me. I polished off a few two-sixths of Christmas cheer this weekend. This is not going to be the thing that does me in. And the good thing about all this is the payoff at the end. Once you've kind of internalized what it means to not be seeking validation all the time, once you start to be the own judge of your own actions, it actually changes how you behave. So instead of being that guy who just tries to make mommy happy, whoever mommy is, the boss, the wife, or Karen, whoever, instead of that, you do things because you know they need to be done for whatever reasons you want. You know you got to do a certain thing with the kids because that's what you do as a good father, not because that's what other people tell you makes a good father. And most importantly, you stop letting yourself get manipulated so much. The big reason manipulation works is because, for the most part, there's people that are seeking judgment and validation from others. Once Karen saying you're a bad father or you're not a real man, once that judgment doesn't matter to you anymore, once you no longer need the validation that comes from her telling you you are these things, well, all of a sudden, when she tells you being a good man is paying her bills, doesn't hold any sway in your life. And you stop acting in other people's best interest and you start acting in your own. It generally makes you not only a better father, a better husband, a better boyfriend, but just a better man in general. What standards, by the way? Your standards. And those are the ones that count. Anyways, for real this time. Take care, guys. Music